Let's just feel the music for a second. You know, it's just our intro. Wow, let's get this watch time up. Mm. Yeah, what's up? What's up? What's up? All right, guys. We got a good episode today. We got some things I, I really wanted to get into. The first one being just, it's a, I think it's kind of a funny story about, uh, I, have, I have some serious beef with Idris Elba, okay? And some of you may also have this beef. So let me just explain the story of why, why Idris Elba, I, I really hate the guy, but at the same time, I, I, I like him and I can understand what's going on, right? But, but deep down, I'm like, for real, man? you know, like for real. But anyway, here's the deal. So me and my girl, you know, most of the time when we fall asleep, we'll have something on the TV. But lately it's been, we turn the TV off. So it's complete silence and complete darkness. Right. And I love that. That's the way I want to fall asleep. Right. This is an easy story. So lately this happened a couple times already. This happened a couple times and I don't like this. Um, I fall asleep. Right. I fall asleep and I wake up to loud noises and screaming and shit. And I'm wake up and the TV's on, right? And I'm like, what the fuck? The TV? And I, the projector, big projector projecting on the wall, and that's our TV. And I roll over and it's my girlfriend, Chelsea. She's sitting straight up watching like this. Guess who's on the screen? Idris Elba. So meanwhile, while I think it's, it's bedtime, and she wants to play like it's also bedtime, I find out that she's actually awake watching Idris Elba, right? Now, here's the deal. It wouldn't bother me, but I look nothing like Idris Elba, right? So then I go, hold on a minute. Hold on. You couldn't, you couldn't find any other, maybe a white actor with red hair? I know there's not a lot of them. You couldn't find one of those, but no. You know, and you know that movie. What what was it? I think it was called Beast or something. Every time when me and my girl were in the talking stage, I would go over to her house. She would she would be like, "You want to turn on a movie?" And she would always be like, "Yeah, let's turn on Beast." And I'd be like, "You've you've mentioned that movie like eight fucking times, okay?" She loves Idris Elba. Now this looks nothing like him, right? And I and I'm just like I'm like this. You really love Idris Elba, huh? And she's like, yes. Like, he's just such a good actor. And no takeaway, he is a great fucking actor, right? That's he is. I'm not arguing that point. But what I am saying is, it's kind of tough for me. Okay, that's what I'm trying to get at. It's kind of tough when I look like this and she loves Idris Elba. So I got beef with him. Great guy. Sure, he's nice. Seems fantastic. But hey, man. You're taking my girl on a nightly basis. I think she's falling asleep with me. She's actually falling asleep with Idris Elba. So that's a toughie. That was a real toughie, man. It's been getting to me mentally, and I just I wanted to vocalize the struggle that I've been going through, and hopefully some of you also are going through this struggle. But then there's something lighthearted and fun happened to me yesterday, right? And I, this is a great story, okay? So I'm manning the bar, you know, I'm just a bartender. I'm just fucking doing my job. And it's a relatively slow shift. It was storming, raining at my job. It was just, it was not pretty outside. And this guy walks in middle-aged dude. Well, 54, right? And he sits down at the bar, has a glass of Chardonnay, which is a white wine. If you don't know. And you're like, Hmm, okay. And he just starts chatting up, dude. He just needed someone to talk to. He brought in a book, but motherfucker was lying. He didn't come prepared to read at all. He wanted to talk, right? The book was back up, okay? The first option is unload all of life's shit onto the bartender. And if the bartender wasn't available, he'd read, right? So anyway, I'm there and I'm available because it's slow. And he decides he wants to tell me about the death (laughs) about the death of his father-in-law right now here's the story here's the story this guy comes in alone right and he tells me he first he first he tells me about his best friend that was in the army that died in a plane crash right 
He was flying over Alaska. The wings apparently iced over. The flaps couldn't flap, and they nosedived into the ground. His best friend, his wife, and their kids all dead. Right? That's a, that's how he opens up the interaction. That's how this random dude starts out the conversation. Let me tell you about how my best friend died in a nose and the plane crash that nose dived into the earth. <laughs> okay? <laughs> tell me about it. Then he goes into this is how my father-in-law died. Every year his the father-in-law, so his his ex-wife, it was his ex-wife's father and stepmom. So the that father was has this a wife, but that was you okay, you get the deal, okay? Every year for 20 years they would canoe and they would go up this Alaskan river. He told me the river. I don't fucking remember. And they would camp and they would go to certain checkpoints and pick up food at different little stores or whatever. Right. They did it for 20 years. People around knew when they were coming and I were expecting, right. So he goes on to tell me that one time, that this one time they don't show up to one of their checkpoints, right? APB. They're missing. Something's wrong. They're supposed to be here. They've been here every time at this correct time for 20 years, and they're not here. They go out. They're looking for them. They can't find much. They find the canoe floating down the river. You're like, what? They go to find their camp spot. Little remnants of the camp campsite have just been torn up and are all over the place. So you know what? That must mean they were both eaten by bears. Like this guy, like this right here. That's how I felt in my bar. Like this guy right here. Just, <laughs> huh? He goes, yeah, they found the bear. They killed it. Opened it up, found their body parts in the bear's stomach. Huh? That's the story I'm being told. Then he decides to tell me how his wife died. Huh? So this guy, all about death, right? What? This guy's all about death. That's why he's drinking fucking Chardonnay. I guess I'd be drinking a red wine, but this guy's drinking a Chardonnay. A Chardonnay fucking a, okay? Tells me how, about how his wife dies. Now, that's way more personal. I don't want to ex exploit that on camera, even though it's a pretty good story. Then he goes on to tell me how another person died. Another person. Another person. All this guy knows is death. Okay. Okay. I think, I think that's a great story. Like, I'm going like this. I'm going like this. Yeah, we're changing this cocktail on the menu. It's called the I Riz. It's pineapple juice, lemon juice, uh, elderflower topped with empress gin. So it's yellow and purple. It's really beautiful. We're replacing it with a rhubarb gin fizz, rhubarb syrup, you know, gin, lemon juice. We shake it and then soda water on top. It's beautiful, nice garnish, bada bing. And then he goes, he goes, yeah, my friend died. My best friend died in a nosedive with his family and kids in the plane. They tried to contact him, couldn't find him, found him. What the fuck did what the fuck did you just say? What the f Okay. And then he starts going on. Then he starts talking to me about how hot his daughter is. What? He goes, I mean, she's got my blue eyes, blonde long hair just like her mother. He goes, she got about C cups, skinny waist. Oh god, is she beautiful? And I'm like, what the fuck is up with this guy? What? In the meantime of telling all these stories, he's gone through about eight glasses of Chardonnay. We do a five ounce pour at my job. So he's drank about 40 ounces. Is that correct math? About 40 ounces of wine. Didn't eat anything. Didn't even open the book. Okay, so this, uh, that's just a fun story, in my opinion, about how my day went yesterday. I just love that, right? I think it's, I think it's fucking amazing. But now, let's, let's, let's get into the bulk of this. I, I saw the movie Sound of Freedom, right? Now, this is just fucking depressing. Now, God damn, well, we just go getting depressing with this shit, man. So here's the deal. Me and my girl, we keep seeing all this shit on TikTok about how like the Sound of Freedom and the theaters are like fucking up. They don't want people to see it, right? So immediately, we're like, we got to go see it. And I'll tell you what, dude. 
we try and buy tickets to the uh, NGC in Woodstock, uh, Georgia, to go see this thing. Sold out, right? We show up at 3 o'clock thinking, it's 3 o'clock. Who's at the fucking movie theaters on a Wednesday at 3 o'clock? Apparently, everybody. That bitch was packed out like Disney World, dude. Every seat taken. Holy shit. So then we have to drive an hour and a half to my hometown. Every theater sold out. We have to drive down to my hometown. Bro, it was actually wild. I've never seen so many people in a movie theater. Usually when I go to a movie theater, there's a couple people, you know, maybe there's like 10 max in the theater with me. Every seat was full for this movie, which is crazy to me. All right, so let's get into the bulk of the movie. Here's my pros and cons of the movie. Pros, it's a great message, you know, it's really dark, and I love that. It makes you feel some type of way by the end of the movie, which I love. If you're watching a movie and it doesn't make you feel some kind of way at the end, either ecstatic or curious or hurting and depressed or nauseous, any kind of feeling at the end, then that movie was a waste of time, dude. That's why I'm not going to go see Elemental by fucking Disney, because I know by the end I'm going to go like this. Waste of fucking time, right? But I watched this one and you go, damn, that's fucking happening, man. And, I, you know, and these are here serious spoiler alert. OK, you I'm watching the movie and it's beautiful that this guy was able to save this young girl. You know what I'm saying? And if you if you truly didn't think that they would be saved, then you're kind of stupid. Right. It's a feel good movie. Right. But with a dark message. So he saves the young girl. But then I'm like. So what happened to the other like 20 kids he just left behind just to save this one girl? Are they still in the forest stomping on grapes? You know what I'm saying? Like, are, are, is that what they're still doing? Because that's, that's some dark shit, buddy. You only, you only took one. You could have. That's dark. Right? But it's this, it's this story, man, about how, oh, man, I don't want to really, I don't want to spoil it too much, but this guy... He, he's sick of just catching the pedophiles, right? He wants to save the kids. So he he sets some stuff up, meets the correct people, and starts saving these kids. And it's this beautiful message. But I, I really was, I was definitely let down by the movie Sound of Freedom in the way thinking that it was definitely going to be exposing people in Hollywood or like congressmen or like different like sneaky things. You know what I'm saying? Like I thought I was going to be learning more about like what the uh, elites in society are doing. But moreover, this movie was just about how like these kids just got like, they you know, just get taken, you know, just randomly taken and put in shipping containers and shipped. And I'm like, okay, so now I just know how to move a kid. Okay. I don't know who's actually doing it. Right. It's just these random peoples in fucking Catalan, Mexico. I'm like, okay, so now, now all I took away from this is to never visit Catalan, Mexico. That's about it. That's what I learned because I know they were doing this shit. I mean, I've read about it plenty, right? But I'm now I'm just never going to go visit those places, visit those places like that. It was, it was fine. The movie, I'll give the movie Sound of Freedom a 7.9. It doesn't get an 8. It doesn't get an 8. You've never, oh, here's the, here's the score. You've never once seen a movie that's a 10. You haven't. It's not existed yet. It hasn't been there. So you've seen plenty of 9.9 movies, right? This is two points down. I didn't like the feel-good movie. I don't like the feel-good ending. I wanted somebody to die. I honestly, and it's really dark to say this, I wanted both kids to die. I did. And I wanted the father and the cop to team up and just annihilate John Wick style all the pedophiles. I would have loved that. That would have made me feel like, fuck yeah, by the end of the movie. But by the end, I'm just like, oh, now she's just going to have a shit ton of trauma for the rest of her life. You know what I'm saying? So you go, uh, I don't like the ending. The music, fine. The music was fine. You also deduct a point because the kids keep going like this. Hey, ho. And I don't like that. I didn't think it added anything to the story. I didn't know if that had background meaning. You didn't enlighten me enough on it. So that deducts a point, right? That deducts some serious pointage. I, I thought some things were boring and slow. You could you definitely could have cut it out because it, at the end it was like we went in for the nine ten showing and we left the movie theater like twelve twenty. I was like, bro, how long is this movie? Like, just catch them already, just catch them. 
I wish there was a lot more violence, but not like I mean, it's you know, it's gru- what that was happening to the children was gruesome. But I wanted to see people's brains get blown in. You know what I'm saying? I want to see the pedophiles like brutally murdered. That's what I want, and that and it didn't deliver in that way. So the movie Sound of Freedom was okay. It was okay. I wanted a lot more exposure on on what's going on, a lot more brutality, and just way more dark shit. And it didn't have that one, you know. So I, I, I give it a seven point But the movie was okay. I think I don't understand how Mel Gibson was tied in because I, when I was watching the credits, I didn't see like shit about Mel Gibson in any of the credits. I saw the director and the writer's name and the production and the crew and the producers, and I didn't see Mel Gibson. So I was like, huh. Why are we keep interviewing this guy about this movie? You know, I thought the end special message was actually really interesting. The uh, if you don't know what it is, it was a like a buy buy a ticket Ford for someone else. You know, it's like a you know when you're going through a drive through and you're like, I'll I'll buy whatever they're having behind me. It's like that, but with a movie theater ticket, right? And I thought that was pretty interesting. That's a great way to like create sales for the box office, right? Or whatever it is, or whatever it's called. Like, if you think you may only sell 30,000 tickets, but you can convince 10,000 of those people to buy one extra ticket, well, hold on now. My math may be wrong, but you just now sold in total 40,000 instead of 30. That's a great fucking idea, dude. Let's do that. And say what if some of those people buy two, three, five tickets, huh? <laughs> Now we're hitting big numbers. What was also interesting was how they said that the movie only had been out or they've been in progress of putting the movie out for five years. Now you go, why did it take that long, right? Was it the studio? Was it the execs? What was it? Because because I, I feel like if I'm watching Law and Order or if I'm watching ID or First 48 or whatever it may be, there could be some there could be some human trafficking shit in there. There could be some child deaths in there. There could be some... Dark, I hate even saying it, child molestation, right? Some dark shit in those shows, but they don't get pulled. They don't take them five years to get made. I don't think at least. So then you watch this and you go, why did this take so long? Was it the funding, the studio? Like I said, the execs, what was it? It was, it was really interesting. I think the locations that they used in the movie were pretty killer. Pretty fucking killer. I thought the acting was, was, pretty, it was pretty good. It was pretty good. Uh, some was a little bit of overboard, you know, I, I hate when the bad guy character is doing cocaine and is pretty much a bulldog. I don't like that. Or he's just all, hey, I'll do what I want. You know, he's like, he drags out his words. I'll do whatever I want. And you're like, bro, just, just say the fucking line. Like, you didn't, you didn't got to do all that extra shit. So that was it was okay. Music, yeah, like I said, music was not not that good, but you know, it was dark and it definitely triggers a lot of people and it helps with the sales in that way. But the sound of freedom was it was all right. It was a fair, fine movie. You know, I'm I'm excited for uh, I'm excited about how well it's doing in the box office though. I like that. And I like how they're trying to keep it down apparently with all the fucking AMC theaters uh AC being out. Which is interesting, what, and it, which is the most interesting part about the Sound of Freedom AMC theaters being shut down shit is that the workers at AMC or whatever the theaters that are doing this are willing to go out into the crowd and go, hey guys, the, a, the theater is having trouble, difficulties, we may not be able to show it. Like They're willing to do that knowing most likely that the movie's completely fine to be shown, right? And you're going to try and tell me that none of those workers are on fucking TikTok saying, oh bro, like... Look at all these other theaters doing this. Why are they telling us to do it? I'm not going to go do that. These people need to see this movie. This is like the new thing. But what's so interesting is that the workers are like brainwashed and willing to tell the public, you shouldn't see this. We're having trouble, difficulties. Be like, no, motherfucker. AMC doesn't give a fuck about you. They will fire you right now on the spot. No reason. Just because. Because they'll find someone else to come in and fill the shoes. Right? No problem. You're an hourly worker, bro. You're an hourly worker. You ain't got shit. So why would you go do that? Which is so interesting. Try as a person who most likely, at, if you're an AMC worker, you're probably not doing human trafficking, right? But you're willing to go tell the people not to go see the movie or that the theater's broken or that we're having issues. 
when, hey man, it could be the biggest fucking coincidence that only the theaters showing a Sound of Freedom at certain times are getting messed up. Now, it could be a, nationwide. It could be the biggest fucking coincidence. But if we use our brains logically, it's probably not, right? They're still willing to go do it. That's just wild to me. That's wild to me. <sighs> so, I don't know. This whole thing, this whole thing has just been, uh, been really odd. Been really odd to me. I just, I just don't get it. You know, I'm having trouble with it. But um, I'm gonna tell you one last thing about my uh, cocktail that I, I made today, and that I got shit on pretty hard for, but I think it's good, so I'm standing by it. What I did was I made a tomato gimlet. So this is the deal. I uh, if you're not interested in this, just end the video now. But if you kind of like cocktails or are in the mood of mixology, which I fucking hate that word. It makes me sound like such a fucking pussy. I'm a mixologist. But anyway, this is what I did. I took tomato paste and made a simple syrup out of it. Sugar, hot water, tomato paste. Stir it up, right? Beautiful. Then I take foam. I believe it's just foam. It's a type of cheese. It's like an earthy cheese. I used our house vodka because I don't want to do anything too expensive. And it was a honeysuckle vodka. I used that and a little bit of just normal vodka, right? About 80, 20%. I grated the thumb cheese, put it in the vodka, shook it up, let it sit in the refrigerator and refused for three days. So it's like a cheesy, earthy, calm vodka. It doesn't have a harsh bite to it, which I wanted. Took the tomato paste. Did that shit. And then we also, the kitchen back of house was using a tomato broth for some of their sauces. So it was like a clear liquid that tasted like tomato, which is fucking exactly what I needed. Tomato broth, tomato paste, simple syrup, and earthy cheese of vodka. Throw it all together. Add some lime juice, right? And it's a play on a gimlet, right? I have all that. And it's like this murky shit brown, gross color. I add in a shit ton of whole milk, bunch of whole milk. Shake that bitch up. Let it sit in the refrigerator for another two days, right? So this is about a week-long cocktail that it's taken me. But leave it in the thing. Then today, this morning, I get six, so two, two, no, and one, so five. Five coffee filters. Filter it one time. Filter it a second time. Filter it a third time. And now it's like a clear liquid, but has the flavors of the cheese and the tomato and the lime, but it's like clear, right? Beautiful. Put that in a, in a tin, shake it hard and long, <laughs> and it's icy and like uh, bubbly on the top a little bit, but clear. Put that in a coupe glass, Bing! then drops of olive oil, extra virgin, one, two, one, two, one, one, right? Different sizes, green on top of white liquid. Then cut a tomato in half, not a big one, a small one, cut it in half, skewer through it, Bong on it. Clarified tomato gimlet. That's my latest cocktail. It's a savory cocktail. It's a little bit sweet. And if you like tomatoes, then you'll love it. They're in season right now. And um, we're all about seasonality. So there you go. I just wanted to explain that to you. This has been an easy episode. Jake on the Sound of Freedom, cocktails and depressing bar stories. Thank you guys for watching. I, you know, I love you guys. Um, appreciate you taking the time out of your day to click on this, share this, like this, comment on it, subscribe to it. Yeah. Have a good one. Love you guys. Bye.